Hello and welcome, my name is Chelsea, I am insatiably curious, and so I'm going to bring you along on my quest for more knowledge. Today we're checking out Emu War Oversimplified. Now, I do know the general gist of the Emu War because it is, of course, one of the most ridiculous events in Australian history, but the couple of oversimplified videos that I have seen are really entertaining, and I'm interested to see if they cover any details that I don't know. And perhaps some of you may have never heard of the Emu War, so in that case, Buckle up and prepare to make a mockery of the Australian government's incompetence. Taking the piss out of our government is a fundamental part of Aussie culture, so feel free to join in. Don't hold back, we fully encourage it. This is Australia. Australia. For the man who imagines being strangled by a tarantula while a kangaroo breaks his kneecaps and thinks, mmm, yes please. <laughs> For the man who pictures himself being eaten by a snake in the burning outback while eating a Vegemite sandwich and thinks, Mmm, yes, yes, please. And that man was Governor Arthur Phillip, who landed in Eastern Australia in 1788, presumably saw a dingo being eaten by a crocodile, being eaten by a death adder, being eaten by a koala, being eaten by Mel Gibson, and thought to himself, Yes. Good. Now I know what you're thinking. But oversimplified, the British didn't discover Australia, the Vikings did. And you'd be wrong. I'm not sure why you'd think that. But hey, if you love Vikings so much, then why don't you check out today's sponsor. Vikings War of Clans was inspired by the PC strategy and RPG games of the 90s. That was smooth. Gotta hand it to him. <laughs> that, was, that was a smooth segue into a uh, sponsorship. We all love, like Age of Empires and Civilization. If you, like me, want to relive those memories again with a new experience, Absolutely. then this mobile game is for you. Vikings lets you choose your own playstyle, and what makes its world so addictive is that more than 20 million online players are constantly changing the way it evolves by never ending fighting over resources, forging new alliances, and competing in live events. Support my channel by downloading Vikings for free only from my links in the description box below, and get the special bonus of 200 gold coins and a protective cool. shield. Now that's good value. Buy, buy. Man, this is great. The market will continue to grow forever. But what if it doesn't? Oh crap, I never thought of that. Sell, sell. And the stock market crashed, which led to economic downturn, which meant banks wouldn't lend anyone any money, which led to more economic downturn, which meant everyone stopped buying stuff, which led to more economic downturn. And hey, what if all the crops in the Great Plains were destroyed in a drought and then a big dust storm engulfed the area? That's right, more economic downturn. And in an effort to combat the crisis, America began imposing tariffs on foreign imports, which made the economic downturn go global, and the earth got really depressed. But one nation that was hit harder than most by the whole affair, Australia. The problem for Australia was that it relied heavily on its export industry. Australian goods, wool, wheat, and shrimps for throwing on two barbies. And in the current economic climate, no one was buying. To make things worse, Australia had introduced its own currency and pegged it onto the gold standard via the British pound. But then the UK started messing with its own peg on the gold standard. And if this is starting to sound confusing, then let me oversimplify it for you. Hey UK, looks like my car is broken down. Want to give me a tow? No problem, friend. I got you. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> More economic downturn. The point I'm trying to make is things weren't good, and in particular, it was Australia's farmers that were suffering most. After the First World War, Australia had given returning veterans land for farming. But with the current economic crisis, the farmers just weren't making enough money, and many left to go find work in the cities. But for those who remained, things were about to get even worse. <laughs> Before we get into that, it's time for some cultural exchange. My national bird is the bald eagle. It's a strong patriotic symbol of America and a deeply valued and protected species. My national bird is the peafowl. It's a beautiful creature whose vivid colors represent India, so we list it as a protected species. My national bird is the emu, and it's a pest. Mm -hmm. Also bloody delicious. Emus, six feet tall. Emus are also essentially Satan in the form of a bird. They are horrible creatures, vile, evil. Nobody likes them. <laughs> 90 to 120 pounds, and able to run at speeds up to 40 miles per hour, usually return to the coast after their breeding season. But suddenly they found Western Australia full of lush, wet farmland. Oh my, look at all this delicious wheat that just so happens to be growing here in large quantities. Hey guys, get a load of this! Mm. You know oh my, oh look wow. at all this delicious wheat that just so happens to be growing here in large quantities. Hey guys, get a load of this! You know my, look at all this delicious wheat that just so happens to be growing here in large Hey, who left this big hole in the fence? Guys, get a load of this! Oh wow, it's always a big hole. Oh yeah, really? Oh yeah, I'm a super super relaxed. That's what I am. I'm a super super relaxed. Great. 
What a lovely morning for some farming. What? Those damned emus, they have it in for me. They're bullies. They're nothing but bullies. Calm down, Bruce. They're just animals. It's not personal. Hey, Farmer Bruce, where did you find that hat? The toilet? <laughs> oh, it's definitely personal. Yes. 20,000 emus cost the already struggling farmers millions more pounds in lost crops and damages. The situation couldn't continue like this. Something had to be done. So in 1932, the farmers turned to the government for help. You'd think they'd go to the Minister of Agriculture, but these farmers said no. This is a job for the military. So they went to George Pierce, the Minister of Defense. That's right. Australia was to go to war with the emus. But not everyone was happy with the idea. This is barbaric. We can't go slaughtering thousands of our own national bird. Oh, come on, guys. The machine guns will make it quick and painless. Machine guns? You're using machine guns? This is animal cruelty. Look, I know it's unusual, but it's not like we're poachers turning the birds into feather hats. Think of the benefits. It'll be good target practice for our boys. The government can show it took action. Plus, I can get myself a nice new feather hat. Uh, did I say feather hat? I meant I want to gather chat with you about getting you all some nice new feather hats. Uh, did I say feather hats? I meant I want to wage terror at these emus and turn them all into feather hats. Damn it. Of course, Pierce first made the farmers sign an agreement saying that they would pay for the whole thing and that Pierce wouldn't take any of the blame if the operation that was clearly very stupid turned out to indeed be stupid. And the operation went ahead. Major that bodes well. If you're asked to sign a waiver that says, yeah, I'm not going to hold you accountable if you completely ruin this entire operation, uh, or <laughs> be suspicious, be very suspicious. GPW Meredith and his men were sent with two Lewis machine guns to hunt down and take out the evil emu population in Western Australia. Target spotted. Well, was it an emu? No, sir. It's an emo. <laughs> Damn it, Jones. Learn your vowels. I'm sorry. I'm okay, sorry. <laughs> it looks like the humans are coming for us. But Poor check emo. this out. I've come up with an amazing plan. See if you can follow me here, okay? When they approach, we run away. Sir, you're a genius. Pierce sent the camera crew along with the machine gunners to capture some good Fantastic plan. World propaganda for the government. And the first battle took place in November at Campion. The men spotted a mob of emus from a distance, so they set up their guns and opened fire. The emus split up into smaller groups and ran in every direction. The men were only able to kill what they called a number of birds, but the vast mm -hmm. majority... How strategically vague is that? We were able to kill a number of birds. So what, a thousand or zero? <laughs> they are both numbers. Got away. Cut! Surprisingly, many of the emus were able to take multiple bullets, but still run at full speed to safety, causing Meredith to compare them to tanks, saying if yeah. we had a military division with the bullet-carrying capacity of these birds, it would face any army in the world. Okay, we need to get closer. No, you idiots, not to me, to the emus. Oh, sorry. No, no. He likes it. I like it. So <laughs> next, they it. tried sneaking up on a large... I could write these things. Large number of emus near a local dam and firing at short range. Maybe the men were just unlucky, but my professional opinion says the emus were magic because both guns jammed after just 12 emus were killed and once again, the rest got away. Cut! The men were feeling a little humiliated after losing to a pack of discount ostriches, so they decided to <laughs> move further ostriches. south, where the emus were said to be tamer. And this time, they had a new strategy. Okay, Jones, here's the plan. You mount the machine gun in the back, I'll chase the emus, you shoot. Got it? Got it. Yikes. I'm gonna shove that camera up your- The operation was a fiasco, and the press <laughs> had a field day. In Wait, their shirts say my chemical bromance. Amazing. In Parliament, Pierce was lambasted, and an opposition party member suggested that medals should be handed out to the emus, who had won every round so far. <laughs> Pierce, feeling quite humiliated, called the operation off, but four days later the farmers approached again and said, Hey man, the emus are still eating all our crops, can you send the army back out here? And Pierce was like, Yeah, okay. So the operation was back on for round two, and this time Meredith and his men had learned the emus' guerrilla tactics, and were much more successful, with reports suggesting the men were cutting down 300 emus every week. I hope you boys are getting great footage of this. What on earth are you filming? 
Despite the success, the media had lost interest in the whole thing. But with a thousand emus killed, Pierce finally ended the operation and returned to Parliament declaring victory for the humans. So there were 20,000 emus out there destroying crops, and you've killed a thousand. Mm-hmm. Meaning there's still 19,000 emus out there. Yep. And in addition, you've burned through 10,000 rounds of ammunition. Uh-huh. Meaning you wasted 10 rounds per confirmed kill. That's right. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and call this one for the emus. Mm -hmm. At least I got a feather hat. What? What? So in the end, the emus won the Great Emu War of 1932, and the emus continued to wreak havoc on the farmers for years to come. The government introduced a bounty system, which saw some success. But for a moment, let's take some time to remember the brave men who said goodbye to their families and risked their lives to take on <laughs> the great, evil, emu population in Western Australia. But even more importantly, let's think of the friends they made, the bond they created, and the memories they shared. Take me home <laughs> to golden fields and sights of days gone by. It's where the heart lies with stories on. Hey, uh, guys, I solved the emu crisis. Really? How? I just made some better fences. Wow. <laughs> nice. Well, that was the Emu War Oversimplified. Let me know down below, was this your first time hearing about the Emu War, or did you already know of it? To all of you delightful non-Australians, I hope the next time you think to yourself, oh man, Aussies are just so cool, they're so friendly and easygoing, not a care in the world, seem like the greatest people. Just remember the time when we went to the military for help with a pest control problem, declared war against a flock of flightless birds, brought guns to a fight in which our opponent's only weapons were beaks and claws, and we still fucking lost. <laughs> like, what? What a wonderfully Australian display of government incompetence. And, uh, 90 years later, our government is still run by dipshits. So, that's disappointing, but at least we're consistent, I guess? <laughs> anyway, I hope you found this video somewhat educational and entertaining. Uh, these oversimplified videos are quite fun, and I've only seen a couple of them, so if there is a specific one you would like me to watch, let me know, and I shall do that. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to subscribe if you would like to, but you don't have to. You're welcome here either way, and I will see you next time. I have to sneeze. Oh no! Ah! <laughs>